I invite you to remain standing for the reading of God's holy word. Today we will be in Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has great, done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like the streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. In a Dr. Seuss Christmas story, the small-hearted Grinch steals food and toys and presents from all the Who's of Who'sville. He does this in an effort to curb their Christmas joy. Yet he was surprised that on Christmas morning, when they awoke, they were all surprised, disheartened for a moment, but in the end, they wound up singing songs of joy without any presence at all. It goes on to say, In the Grinch with his Grinch feet, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling, how could it be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tags, it came without packages, boxes, or bags, And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. The Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, is a whole lot more. And today we can stand here in the presence of the Lord and say, indeed it is. And today I want us to do something a little bit different. There will be times in which, if you stand in agreement with me, I want you to say amen. I'm hoping that you will reply. When I say amen, I'm going to ask you to do so in kind. Today's Advent reading is about joy. The psalmist here uses the word joy four times in only six verses. Joy is, after all, the greatest of gifts. Joy is the glory of the Lord, now on earth and in heaven. Joy is more than an emotion. It is a state of being. Joy is not circumstantial. Joy resonates from within, despite our circumstances. And if you desire joy, and you desire it to resonate within you, then let me hear you say, Amen. Amen, indeed. I want to say this, and it comes from the scripture today. Joy comes to those who dream. In Psalm 126, verses 1 and 2, it says, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter, and our tongues with songs of joy. The psalm here is a lamentation of sorts, remembering a time in which they had been brought out of captivity and things were going good for the nation of Israel. He's longing for that again. Things are not currently what they should be. And the psalmist, though, he has hope. He has hope that once again they will be. The New Interpreter's Bible says the tears of the present time are watering the seed of future harvest of gladness. For the people who dare to dream, when our minds are full of dreams, let God's people say, Amen. Amen. I believe we can do better than that. All right. Amen indeed. Praise be to God. In the classic movie Miracle on 34th Street, Santa Claus is put on trial in New York City for spreading cheer and goodwill among the people. His principles of consideration and cooperation seem threatening in a world of competition. As the charges are leveled and the trial begins, the defense lawyer is confronted by his girlfriend. 
She asked him, why risk your job and your reputation and your standing in society in a silly pursuit to prove the existence of Santa Claus? The determined attorney replies, because it's more than Santa Claus on trial. It is love, hope, peace, fairness, and goodwill that is on the witness stand. I intend to defend the principles in the courtroom of mankind. May I ask you today, what are your great dreams for Christmas? I'm not talking about presents. I'm not talking about special family gatherings if you're able to have them this year. I'm not even talking about the weather, although a white Christmas here in East Alabama would be a nice surprise, wouldn't it? There's a song uh, by the well-known country band named Alabama that says, A Tender Tennessee Christmas. It's titled, A Tender Tennessee Christmas. It goes on to say, it's the only Christmas for me. And then he talks about the snow falling on the rooftops. Amy Grant, a Christian artist, sings a version of it I love, and we play it in our home about this time of year every year. It has me longing for the Smoky Mountains, sitting in a cabin somewhere by the fire crackling and the snow gathering outside. We can dream, right? The psalmist, the psalmist would say so. But I will say this, whether or not it snows for the holidays, or whether or not you get what you want for Christmas, or whether or not everything goes as you desire it to, those things are, are truthfully irrelevant, to be honest. There are other matters of much more profound experience and importance. You know, an article in USA Today says the happiest people surround themselves with family and friends. They don't care about keeping up with the Joneses next door. They lose themselves, it goes on to say, in daily activities, and most importantly, they forgive easily. Can you dream of a Christmas where you are at complete peace? Where there's no anxiety, no animosity, no hostility? One where you've been healed of the hurts of the past, whether they've been self-inflicted or inflicted upon us, healed through the simple act of forgiveness. I know it's not always easy to dream. Many of us feel like our circumstances will never change, so we give up dreaming that anything will ever be better. But fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, it can and it will. If you believe for a better tomorrow, let God's people say, Amen. 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 Joy comes to those who dream. What about you? Do you dare to dream? Joy comes to those who humbly seek the mercy of God. The scripture says in Psalm 126, verses 3 and 4, it says, Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like the streams of the Negev. Remember when we started out saying that joy was not dependent upon our circumstances? You see, this little verse here can easily be passed over. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like the streams in the Negev. You see, in this region in South Palestine, the beds of the Negev were for the most part of the year waterless, parched, and arid. But when by the mercy of God... The rainy season arrived. They ran with streams of life-giving water. When the Lord has done great things for us, let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. A young man was making his first climb in the Alps. He was accompanied by two guides. It was a steep, hazardous ascent. But the novice felt secure when there was one guide leading in front of him and one guide following behind him. For hours, they etched their way up the steep cliffs of the mountain until they finally reached the summit. Wanting the novice to get the first glorious view, the lead guide stepped aside. The young man, intoxicated with adrenaline in the moment, was oblivious to the strong winds that blew across the summit rocks. So without giving a thought, he jumped up to see. 
And when he stood up, the other guy behind him grabbed his shirt tail and pulled him down. And he said, on your knees, sir, on your knees. You are never safe at the top unless you're on your knees. The most joyful thing that any of us could do today is to bow in humble gratefulness and adoration. You see, life really is not about us. It's not about our personal fulfillment. It's not about our personal peace of mind. It's not about our status and creation. And honestly, it's not even really about our own personal happiness. The chief end of human existence is to know God today, tomorrow, and forever. It is to know God and enjoy Him in the today, but most importantly, for all of eternity. The real joy, even that we get out of worship, the real joy of worship is not what we get out of it, but rather what we put into it. Sometimes, it always makes me hesitate and think when I hear people, if they come to me and talk to me about what they're getting out of worship. Or, or they come to me and, and, and I'm thankful, they, they want to, perhaps they want to join the church and they say, I've just been enjoying worship so much, I just get so much out of your sermons, for example. And, well, I always appreciate that. The real thing that we must know, that we must remember, that we must focus on, the most important aspect of worship is really not about what we get out of it. It's about what we put into it. Let the amen from God's people sound if they stand in humble adoration and worship our Lord and Savior today and for all of eternity. Can we say amen? Amen. 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 Joy comes to those who grieve. <laughs> That's not a popular thing to hear or to say, is it? Joy comes to those who grieve. But the scripture here teaches us, it says, those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. When there are moments or experiences in life, if we'll really just sit with it for a moment and we analyze it and, and we, we stir our thoughts and, and even our gut, when there are moments in life that have or that do make us cry, can the people of God say amen? Amen. amen. The picture conjured up here is that of a sower. As he carries his sack of seeds, he goes out sowing. And as he does so, he's crying or weeping or wailing. Israel, you see, was making a sowing of tears in this season. But a time of joyous harvesting was confidently predicted for her because of the quality of her sowing. Sometimes joy comes out of our grieving. You see, the thing that separates Christian joy from cultural happiness is that joy acknowledges the pain. Happiness is circumstantial, but joy is everlasting. Joy is present with us in the dark of night when the pain of memories and feelings and hurts and disappointments become alive within us. When our body wants to rest and our mind begins to race. And I believe that there are times when this comes directly from the enemy. Oh, but we Christians, we Christians recognize that we can have joy beyond our present circumstances. Joy sits with us through the darkest of nights. Joy is not a pious wish that things will get better. Joy is an abiding promise that God is with us. Pain and sadness are a temporary feeling or emotion, but joy is a state of being. And we must recognize that earthly sorrow has an expiration date. Revelation 21.4 says, And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more sorrow or crying. There will be no more pain, we are taught from the Scriptures. You see, the scripture teaches us that there is no trouble that will enter everlasting life. No sorrow will last forever. Every pain has a lifespan 
to it. There is healing from every heartache. Psalm 35 says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Praise be to God. I like the way the Message Bible puts that verse. The nights of your crying, your eyes out, give way to days of laughter. Isn't that nice? The nights of crying your eyes out give way to days of laughter. 2 Corinthians 5.1 says, For we know that this tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, but we have a building, a house. God, <laughs> excuse me. Mm. Sorry. Sorry for that. Distracted for a moment. Most of you all know that I have a, a pinched nerve in my back, and I just had a lightning bolt go through my leg in my back, so I, I do apologize for that. 2 Corinthians 5.1, for we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. If you can affirm that, if you believe that, then let the church say, Amen. amen. All right. Joy comes from knowing Christ as our Savior and our Lord. Do you believe that? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you for my amen section up here. Appreciate that, Steve. Do you believe that? Do you believe that joy comes from knowing Christ as our Savior and our Lord? If we know Christ as our Savior and our Lord, then that is where we find our joy, our happiness, our peace. There is nothing in this world that gives us peace that we are looking for. There's nothing that will fulfill the longings that we're after. There's nothing that will satisfy the longings of the flesh. The only thing that we find that will satisfy us in this world and for all eternity is knowing Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord. The angel said, praise be to God, in Luke chapter 2, it says, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. It is great news. It is great news of joy that the Savior has come to us to take away the sins of the world and enable us to experience freedom that only He can bring. Freedom that comes only from Him. Joy, you see, is about an encounter with the Savior, Christ the Lord. But it is more than an encounter. It's a relationship. A relationship with Christ, our Lord, by surrendering our will to His will and to His desires for us in our life. This Advent, we recognize that joy is about the arrival of a Savior. Joy is an intervention from God into human affairs. And when that happens, when that happens, the joy is unspeakable and full of glory. What makes Christmas so wonderful is that God comes down to save the likes of you and me. Praise the Lord, oh, our people. Praise the Lord. Let us adore Him. May all of us who have life and breath praise His holy name. Let amen be sounded from His people's lips again. May we gladly and forever adore Him. May all God's people say amen. And worship with us for we recognize that all of our lives can be lived as acts of worship to you lord may we forever be in your presence may your holy spirit dwell within us and be seen through us to a dark and hurting world in christ's name we pray
Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. I, I do want to take a moment before we, before we head out. Uh, Earl just brought to my attention that David and Ann Davis just celebrated their 50th anniversary yesterday. So that... That is indeed, is indeed uh, a moment of joy. Praise be to God for that. May you go in peace. Amen. Amen.